The 1995 Venturi 600 LM is just a 2 million credit special model, that comes from, as the name implies, Venturi, who are French, so it reeks of fresh baguettes, red wine and onions. Anyway, this car is based on their hardcore track-oriented 400 GT, that looks like a Wish.com F40. But don't let that deceive you, it is a genuine French supercar from the times, when France still made fun, reliable and affordable workhorses, that were clapping major cheeks on the world stage, mainly off-road. Rather unfortunately for this car, its real-life performance was rather dire, as in the only 24 hours of Le Mans it competed, it achieved a 21st place finish overall, but ended up not being classified, because of a pesky rule, that you have to actually race to be classified or something. I don't know, I'm not a historian, but what I do know, is that both the road and race cars are rather striking to look at, and their looks are backed up by their performance figures, that are on screen. As with all ready-made race cars in this game, you cannot upgrade them further to what they're already come with as standard, so the only upgrades you can do to them, is giving them lots of headbaits and tickles in the setup screen. But before we hop over there, let's first look at the SUs we'll be trying to amend, depending on how you've experienced playing this game, I, E. Did you play it on original hardware, or base emulation versus enhanced, you might remember most, if not all mid-engined cars be pretty much impossible to drive, and that is because the game's physics are tied to frame rate, and since the physics essentially updated every other frame, the Mr. Cars were very easy to unsettle and would oftentimes explode. This might be fun to drive, as the cars feel like driving a go kart. The main differences between running on enhanced versus original frame rate is that the car will tend to bounce a lot and get unsettled very easily, so tracks that have great elevation changes or large banking are where the biggest differences in performance will be seen, as the tune will only very slightly help to aid this problem, and the rest will be in the hands of the driver. The main way to keep your car stable when approaching a braking zone with elevation, you should brake, and while doing that, you should press the accelerator slightly as to reduce the effects of weight transfer, as it is extremely over the top. Once you've entered the corner, turn in and keep accelerating. At that point the car might only slightly wobble, but before long, it will try to explode, so be ready to fight it as soon as you sense any sort of instability. And whatever you do, do not step off the accelerator completely, always keep some sort of throttle input, as to prevent the car from transferring too much weight and spinning. In addition, if you can avoid staying on the inside line through such corners, I highly advise you do so, as the cars tend to not be as giddy. The same can be said about the car if you're running the game at an enchanced frame rate, but it is very mute. The spinning part, that is, the car might still get unsettled, but it will most likely be due to you understeering or dropping into too low of gear. In addition, you will probably end up going a little too fast in some complexes. Don't panic if you do. Just a slight dab on the brakes will allow you to correct the car's direction, even at the cost of some speed. It isn't ideal, but if you're presented with a choice of, A, slightly slowing down, setting your car straight for the upcoming turn, and clawing back the lost time afterwards, or B, plummeting into a wall, spinning and losing tens of seconds, and maybe even the race, I'd choose the former. Now that you know how to drive, it is time to show you the secret spice, that makes the process of driving just that slightly easier. Since this is a Mr. Car, you want to have more front end grip, but not too much, as to losing speed on the exit, thus the suspension is set up for a soft front and stiff rear, but not too far apart, to maintain a balance, feel free to experiment with the front toe, if you're finding the front end too grippy on corner exit, I've tried using minus 0.05 and it felt somewhere in between of being right, afterwards, the brakes are stock, with maximum aero, Feel free to change that if you're in need of slightly more top speed for test course, but otherwise leave it alone, same with the transmission, 
it is stock with the auto setup set to 20, which provides enough speed and acceleration everywhere, but for standing starts in second gear the wheels tend to spin, if you have full throttle, so just don't full throttle of the line, since this isn't a 4WD vehicle, and you shouldn't be doing this in the first place slash. And we finally arrive at the differential. The stock setting is fine for the most part, but it felt a little lackluster, so this is the more enhanced version, with slightly more locking during acceleration, slightly less under braking and requiring slightly more torque to activate, for the cases where you might end up in a very slow corner in low gear, you you'd have some semblance of a turning circle. Now, to see how this thing compares to the others, Steve is lined up at the start, and he's off. Loads of wheel spin even starting in second gear, he speeds towards the carousel. Taking a wide line, he slightly lifts and tightens up by turn exists. A slight dab of the brakes as he sets up for the thumb. Being slightly too tight this time round, the car squirms as Steve bounces off the limiter. Going flat out right before the corkscrew and he nearly runs it flat, slightly lifting in the middle starts braking just too late and goes wide in the barrel. He speeds onto the back straight only lifting slightly before getting onto it. Spot on the brakes for the roundabout. And rather careful on the exit to the straight, feeling the car not wanting to turn in as tightly and across the line. With all being said and the mistakes he's done, the time comes out to be one minute at 13.226, and that, puts it straight into second place on our leaderboard, neatly fitting between the Speed 12 and the Elise GT1, being around one second detached from either. The French are very similar to the Italians, in the fact they've got mountains, they've got seas, they've got wine and cheese, grass and trees, even naphtha based vehicular machines, and their attempt to making a domestic rival to the Ferraris of the time was very genuine and showed they weren't messing about, but as with all good things, they get taken over. Even if the Venturi nameplate is still running around in Formula E, and doing quite well, I wouldn't keep my hopes up for a new road-going Venturi model, let alone an internal combustion one, so let us cherish the remnants of its legacy, for while swifter alternatives may be abound, there are few that can match it.